How's everyone doing today? Yeah? Okay, so our next guest is an amazing author and illustrator, Cece Bell. She is known for books like El Defo and I Am Donkey, and today we're in for an extra special treat. She's going to read and talk about her newest book, Chick and Brain, Smell My Foot, which comes out on this Tuesday, right? So this is, we're getting a special sneak preview. So if you, everyone can go ahead and just get your hands ready for Cece Bell. Can you hear me okay? Good, good, okay. Hopefully my slideshow will work. Yay, okay. So um, I am Cece Bell. Um, I've been a writer and an illustrator for almost 20 years now. And um, before I go any further, I want to thank you all so much for coming out to um, check out what I've got up my sleeve currently. But um, most of you, or some of you, may have heard of this book, El Defo, which is, yeah, yeah, thank you. Ah, so sweet, so sweet. Which actually came out a whopping five years ago, a long time, feels like forever to me. And um, so this book is my autobiographical graphic novel. And um, it's basically the story about growing up with hearing loss and using hearing aids to help me hear and also being the only deaf kid in my whole school and I used a special magical hearing aid and I could hear my teacher anywhere she was in the school building and, um, and so this was sort of my superhero story. But um, we're not actually going to talk about this very much, however, there will be time at the end, I think, for any questions you might have about this book or anything else you might want to ask. But um, this book, El Defo, was the first time I had ever made a book in the comics format. And um, comics are awesome. And I actually fell in love with comics while working on El Defo. There was so much fun to do. And so the book that I'm about to present to you now um, is also in the comics format. And um, where El Defo was all about hearing, this book is all about smelling. It's about smelling, I like to smell. And it is not, however, about elephants. So, ah, not about elephants. It's a totally different thing. This book is called Smell My Foot. And I love that title so much, I'm going to say it one more time for you. Smell my foot. Oh, what a book. And the stars of this book are Chick, little Chick, and Brain. And the cover of the book looks like this. Chick and Brain, smell my foot. So a lot of people think I'm really weird, and that's probably true. And um, they also wonder, where do my ideas come from? Well, the truth of the matter is most of the time I have no idea where my ideas come from. But this book is a little bit different. The inspiration for this book is actually a series of books that I read when I was a kid back in the 1970s known as the Dick and Jane books. Raise your hand if you have ever heard of the Dick and Jane books. Ah, so many of you, many adults. Well, these are the books that actually helped me learn how to read. And the stars of this book, or it's actually a whole big series of books, the stars of these books are Dick and his younger sister Jane and their dog Spot. And Dick and Jane have a very um, just matter of fact, repetitive way of talking. For example, oh, oh, oh. And believe it or not, oh was the first word I remember reading. I remember sitting there in my first grade class in a circle with all the other kids 
and all of a sudden, that O and that H got closer and closer to making sense until, oh, I was reading a word, and O was the first word I read. O, O, O. So it almost sounds like ho, 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 but O. Oh. So I was thinking about all this. Um, I needed to write a new book, and I was thinking about Dick and Jane and the word O, oh, and I started to think, What's missing from Dick and Jane is that they're not very fun. Dick and Jane books would be so much better if they had been presented in comics form, like this. And comics were books that I was reading in the 1970s, but they were not really allowed at school. And, um, but how much better school would have been for me if we were reading the Dick and Jane books in comics form? These books would be even better if they had been presented in a more silly way. What if Jane said, hello, Dick, smell my foot? <laughs> and how much better that would have been, even better if that had been in comics form. Wow, that would have rocked. So here was my attempt to create a book like Dick and Jane that helped kids read that was far sillier and far goofier. So I needed to come up with a couple of characters, kind of like my own version of Dick and Jane. But I wanted my characters to be a lot sillier. So I thought, well, maybe in honor of Dick and Jane, I will make my characters rhyme with them. So Dick became Chick, and Jane became Brain, and Spot became Spot, <laughs> because I was too tired of coming up with rhymes. That was too much for me, so Spot remains Spot. So this book is all about a foot. It is also about the smelling of that foot. And then there's another level to this book, because Chick is all about manners, good manners. Chick insists that everybody at all times, no matter what the situation, that we all have to say please and thank you and you're welcome. So now we come to the part of the presentation where I am hoping for 100% audience participation, not just the kids, but all the adults here too. So here's what's going to happen. I am going to say, please do like I'm doing, and I want you to remove one of your shoes, just one, OK? Take off your shoe. Go ahead. Taking off my shoe. Take it off. 100% participation. Has anybody taken off your shoe? Yes. Raise your hand. Oh, good. Wonderful. OK. So I'm going to say thank you for taking off your shoe. And then I want you guys to say <laughs> wonderful. OK. So now, please do what I like me. And I don't know if I can sit down, but I'm going to sit down. Sit down. And I want you to smell your foot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you smelling it? Is everybody smelling their foot? OK, I am going to say thank you. Thank you for smelling your foot. And I want you guys to say wonderful. OK, now, raise your hand if you did indeed smell your foot. Yeah, OK, now. Raise your hand if your foot smelled bad. <laughs> OK. Raise your hand if your foot smelled good. Oh, yeah, you know it. Raise your hand if your foot smelled great. <laughs> yes. OK. So I want two of the kids who believe, deeply believe, 
most 100% believe that their foot smells great to raise your hand. I'm going to pick two of those kids to help do a dramatic recreation of a scene from Chick and Brain, Smell My Foot. So I want this little girl there, yes, lovely. And I want this fellow in the Adidas shirt. Come on up, okay, woo! So your foot smells great. You don't know, does your foot smell great? Yeah, yeah. okay, so what's gonna happen is you guys are going to be chick and brain. So I want you, your chick, okay? And you can be brain, okay. You got that on there? Okay, pull it down a little bit for me. Pull it down so it does, there we go, beautiful. So, so we've got chick and brain, I want you to get close together, okay? And so all you have to do is stand there. Yeah, but at some point, you are going to smell Brain's foot, and Brain is going to smell Chick's foot. So you need to remove your shoe. Oh my gosh, okay, get that shoe. Uh. Okay, so are we ready for the dramatic recreation of Chick and Brain smell my foot? Okay, so what's gonna happen is I'm going to read the story, and you can follow it along, okay? You'll get to see it, and I'll just let you know when it is time to do the smelling. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, oh, a little bit from smell my foot. Brain says, smell my foot. Smell it now, hold on. No, I will not smell your foot. But my foot smells good. My foot smells great. Maybe your foot smells good. Maybe your foot smells great. But I will not smell your foot until you say please, like this. Please smell my foot. And Brain says, oh, okay, the Brain. Smell Chick's foot. Go ahead. No, no, get down in there. <laughs> All right. All right, the so Brain says, woo, that is something else. Now you can smell my foot. And Chick says, no, no, no. You must say please. Say please, and then I will smell your foot. And Brain says, oh, please smell my foot. All right, get down there, way down there. Woo, wonderful. Wow, your foot smells good. Your foot smells great. Yeah, I know. You're welcome. Oh. Wonderful. Yay, yay, yay. Thank you. All right. You may take your shoe back. Don't forget your shoe. Thank you so much, you guys. All right. So that concludes just a little fraction of the story, Chick and Brain, Smell My Foot. Smell My Foot. So believe it or not, that was just the very first part of this book. That was just chapter one. So if you want more of this silly business, then rest assured there is a chapter two. And there is a chapter three. And there is a chapter four in the book, Smell My Foot, believe it or not. So I'm very short, this is short. Thank you for smelling your feet. And you guys can say, you're welcome, absolutely. And there is one thing that I will say is that there will be a second Chick and Brain book coming out much later, and that one will be called Chick and Brain, Egg or Eyeball. Is it an egg or is it an eyeball? You will have to wait and see. So, does anybody have any questions about anything? And um, hopefully, all right, so let's see. I think we've got it set up here. Okay, I'm probably going to need a little bit of help, but we'll see what happens. So, remember, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm a lip reader, and um, so, if I have a little trouble, don't worry. We'll figure it out. 
So, yeah, question. What's your favorite part about writing books? Hmm, hold on a second. I can't see. Could you repeat the question? The, the volunteer. Could, would, you mind, would you mind repeating the question? What is my favorite book? What is my favorite book that I've written or my favorite book ever? What's your favorite part about writing books? That I've written? Well, that the, my favorite book of my own is a book called Bewigged that came out a long time ago. But my favorite book in the world is probably, or at least one of them, is The Secret Garden. Do you know The Secret Garden? No? Oh, what a book. You'll love it. It's from a long time ago, but it's a great book. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Next question. All right. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Oh, could I ask you, wait, before you ask questions, could I ask the volunteers, both of you, after the question is asked, would you mind taking the microphone, if you can, and repeating that question if I need help? Absolutely. You, you, will Absolutely. You, and also, there are captions. Okay. Uh, would you, why don't you, yes. you stay here. I will stay here. Stay here. I'm don't leave me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. How long does it take you to write your books? How long, How long does okay. it take you to write your books? Okay. Um, are you talking about El Defo? Yes. Okay. Yes. El Defo took a long time. It took about five years. That's why you haven't really seen El Defo Part 2. But um, this book that I just presented was a little bit, took a little less time because it's shorter and sillier. But um, that's a great question. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Back and forth. <laughs> All right. What's your most popular book? What book is most popular of yours? Oh, El Defo by far. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just, there, there are so many books I've done that nobody's ever read because this one just sort of took off. But, but I'm very proud of it, though. Thank you. <laughs> when you were writing El Defo, why did you choose to draw your characters as bunnies? For OK, I got that one. Bunnies. Okay, the bunny rabbits are um, because it's a book about hearing and it's a book about not being able to hear. And so we use our ears to hear. And so I was trying to exaggerate that. And by making the characters rabbits with giant ears, I was bringing a lot of focus to the ears themselves. And um, also, if you've read the book, you'll see that the little earpieces that I used for my hearing aid back then, um, they go all the way up into my bunny rabbit ears. In real life, they just went to my regular ears. But I felt like I was very visible, like they were way up here, and everybody might be staring at me, even though they probably weren't. So great question. Great question. OK. So why would you want to illustrate and write books? Why do you want to illustrate and write books? Oh, OK, that's a good question. Um, I wanted to, I've always liked to draw. And I've drawn forever. And I actually, like, for a long time, like drawing better than reading, um, just because. And so I wanted to be an illustrator of children's books. But um, nobody would hire me. So then I found out that if I did both things, that um, I would be more likely to get into children's books. So I started writing as a way to have an, a reason to draw the pictures to go with the words. So that's how that happened. Yeah, Thank good you. question. Um, the characters in your books, were they all actual, like the names of the characters, were they all the actual ones? Um, like the characters, like. Are the character names the real names of oh, the people? Okay. Or are they just like. Okay, you know? um, some of them are, and some of them aren't. And a good way to figure out who's who or what names are real is um, if I'm nice to them in the book, if I portray them kindly, then those are their real names. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> Okay. If you had, uh, if you had two books on Earth, and one was a chapter book, and the other was a comic book, which would you choose? 
if you could only have two books on earth, one is a chapter book mm. and one is a picture book, which two books would you want to have on Ooh, earth? Ooh, okay. If uh, for the chapter book, it would probably be um, one of the Arnold Lobel books, one of the Frog and Toad books, probably. And for the picture book, it would be a book called Our Animal Friends at Maple Hill Farm by Alice and Martin Provenson that came out in, I think, 1973, 1974. That's my favorite book in the whole world, favorite picture book in the whole world. That's, that's a great question. Yeah, I love that. What do you think is your least far, favorite part of becoming deaf? What is your least favorite part of becoming deaf? What is my least favorite part? Um, I'll tell you what my favorite part is. My favorite part is that when there are obnoxious sounds like um, children crying. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Um, you know, leaf blowers, I hate leaf blowers, then all I have to do is take my hearing aids out and I'm <laughs> on top of the world. The, the hardest part is feeling left out in a group because it's very hard to follow a conversation in a group and so I may not get the joke or I may not understand anything about what the conversation is because I sort of it takes a lot of brain power to pay attention and lip read, and so I sort of lose the, I lose the conversation, and so sometimes I feel left out. And that was true when I was a kid, and it's still true now. Um, but most of it isn't, isn't too bad, you know. It's not that bad. You get used to it. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite part of writing books? What's your favorite part of writing books? My favorite part of writing a book is probably um, smelling my feet first. I enjoy the foot smelling process. And then um, I actually really like coming up with the idea and trying to figure out the very, very beginning when you try to figure out um, all the puzzle pieces and how they're going to fit together. Yeah. Do you have a sign name? Do you have a sign name? A name for, like, signing? Or yeah. A name when signing? A sign name. Sign, oh, you have a sign language name? I don't. You know, I should. I should. Yeah. But I don't because I'm, I'm, I'm not the best deaf person in the world. I never <laughs> learned how to sign because um, I was just surrounded by hearing people no matter where I went. And so um, I need a sign language name, and it would probably be be something, you know, I'm CC, so maybe it's just be double C, you know, something like that. That's a great question. Yeah, I <laughs> love that. Two minutes. Some Two of, minutes, okay. Some of the scenes in El Defo are some of them based off of like real events. Are scenes in El Defo based on real events? Definitely, definitely. All, it's all about my growing up years and um, it's not always literally true because I had to, um, I'm trying to tell a good story. And so I sort of, all the little episodes that happen in the book are true, but I rearranged them in some ways to make a better, to make it entertaining. Because if I just presented it exactly the way it happened, you'd be crying from all the boredom. boredom. You'd be, ah, oh, this is the worst book I've ever read. So trying to make it epic. And so I rearranged things a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was your inspiration for Chicken Brain? What was your inspiration for Chicken Brain? My inspiration was the Dick and Jane books. And just, I really, I had never written a book before that was um, really trying to help kids learn how to read. Most of the time when I write books, I'm just trying to make myself laugh and hope that other people think the books are as funny as I think they are. You know, it's all about making people laugh. But this time I really wanted to focus on teaching kids how to read. And so the Dick and Jane books were what taught me to read. So I thought it would be fun to try to create that kind of book, but far, far sillier than, than that. Yeah, okay. Are we good? Okay. 
I think we are done. Thank you so much for coming out today and for smelling your feet. I hope they smell good. Okay, thank you. I'll be signing at 1.30.